Welcome back everyone to this video series on creating scripted REST APIs in ServiceNow. In the next two videos, we're going to be discussing access controls. Now these two videos should be seen together and I strongly recommend that you watch both of them. Access controls can be defined on the API level as well as individual resources in that API. They can also be defined for underlying tables and these are the access controls that you may already be familiar with. Whenever you create an API and resources in ServiceNow, the system will automatically assign a pre-configured access control to them. And we're going to take a look at this in just a moment. But what I can tell you right now is that at the moment, our API has a gaping big security hole in it. And we're going to find out what that is. Okay, if we have a look at our scripted REST API record here, we can see in the security tab that there is a default ACL that is being applied here. I didn't specify it when I created the API, but it's there. The system will assign it automatically. It's called scripted REST external default. Now, if we go to one of the resources in our API, such as get vehicle, the version one, and we come down, we can also see that there is a similar setting here for ACL, also called scripted REST external default. If I go to our version two resource for the same operation, come down again, we see the same access control rule here. So let's take a look at this access control. So let's come back to our regular interface here and go to our access control list. And we'll just filter that list and open up the scripted REST external default one. Now, what we can see here that the type of access control up the very top is REST endpoint. We're actually gonna create a new one in just a moment that will have the same type. It will also have the same operation. In fact, there is only one operation for that type and it's called execute. So importantly, we need to look at the definition, the conditions for accessing this key, accessing this access control. And as you can see here, there is one role defined called SNC internal. And the script down below explicitly states that you cannot have the SNC external role. So in my instance, I've already gone ahead and activated and installed the explicit roles plugin. And I recommend that you do that for your instances as well. If you don't know what the explicit roles plugin is, I've added a link in the description below to the documentation. Once you activate this plugin, it will demarcate your internal users from your external users using two roles, SNC internal and SNC external. And whenever you create users in your system, after that plugin has been activated, internal users in the sysuser table, they will be automatically assigned the SNC internal role. And whenever you go ahead and create external users, such as contacts and consumers in your instance, if you've got customer service management, for example, they will be assigned the SNC external role. It's a very good way to demarcate your different kinds of users in the system. So if we go ahead and look at our vehicle integration user, we can see here that one of the roles that it has is the SNC internal role. But not just that user has that role. In fact, every user in my instance right now has this SNC internal role, which means that every user in my platform has access to the API. And that's not good. So if we come back here, we can see we've got uh, three different roles already, admin, integration, and user. I'm going to go ahead quickly and just create a fourth role here and call this one resource because I want to test access both to the API as well as the underlying resources. So I'll go ahead and submit that. And then what I'll do, I'm going to create two access controls. Both of them will be of the type REST endpoint with operation execute. The first one here will be access to the API in general, for the vehicle's API that is, okay? And the role will be the integration role, okay? The one that we've been using previously. I'll save that and then I'll go ahead and create a second access control, also REST endpoint, also execute, but this time it's gonna be for access to individual resources in the API, okay? And I'll assign the role resource, the one that we just created. Okay, so now we've got two roles, integration and resource, associated with two access controls, also called, uh, well, called API and resource. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is come back to my REST API record here and remove the scripted REST external default access control and add the new one that we just created, scripted REST vehicles API. So in other words, to access this API, you will need to pass that access control rule. 
and I will go ahead and save that. I'll also come to the version two of our API for the get vehicle resource here. And I'll do the same thing here, except I'm gonna replace scripted rest external default with the scripted rest vehicles resource. Okay. All right, and we'll save that one too. Okay, now I'm gonna come down and remove the roles associated with my integration user. So if I come to the user record here and go to roles and click on edit, we'll see we can only remove the SNC internal role. Do you know why that is? It's because the role for the integration has been associated with the group and the user has inherited that role from the group. So what we need to do is actually go to the group record, open up that and then click on edit there and we'll see the integration role there. So I'm just gonna remove that, okay, and save that, all right? So this should mean now that our vehicles integration user no longer has access to that API. So let's go ahead in Postman and test that. Okay, so I'll go to the get vehicle resource here. And just to remind ourselves that authorization is using that integration user. I'm not gonna make any changes here. I'm just gonna send the request once more. And this time we get a user not authorized message. Okay, we've authenticated, but we're not authorized to use that API. And that's exactly what we expect. So if we come back to the group now and come to edit and then assign that integration role once more and save that. And we'll do another test. Okay, I'll just send the same request again, send. We also get user not authorized because we assigned a different access control to that particular resource. In order to pass that access control, you actually need to pass the resource access control that we set up earlier. And at the moment, our integration user doesn't have that resource role. But if we were to come to another resource called get vehicles, at the moment that still has the default scripted rest default access control. And that is open to all internal users. So if I were to send the request here, it would actually pass. We would actually be able to retrieve that record because we've passed the access control for the API and we've also passed the resource access control as well. Okay, so let's come back to our group again. And this time we're gonna add the resource role and test that once more. So again, we'll come to get vehicles and send that request. That should work just fine because actually we haven't made any changes to that API and we passed it before. So we're gonna pass it again. But this time, if we go to the get vehicle resource and click on send here, previously we had a user not authorized message but this time it should work and it does. Let's look at the vehicle table and in particular the access controls for this table. Let's have a look at the read access controls in particular. So at the moment we have two. Let's have a look at the conditions in each one to see who we've granted read access to this table. So in the first access control, we see that you need the admin user. Let's have a look at the second one. Here we need the user role. But what about the integration user? What about the integration role that that user has? We've been doing most of our testing in Postman using that user and those tests have just been working fine. We've been able to make API calls. We've been able to get records, create records, delete records, but we don't have read access to this table. And if you look at the access controls that I've got for the other operations, that integration role is nowhere to be found, but still we're able to perform operations on that table. Now we've just explicitly opened up or restricted access to the API for that integration role and the integration user. So that user is able to make API calls, but that user does not have the permission here to access the table in any way, shape or form, except of course, through our API. And that is the big security gap that we have right now in our API. And that's what we need to urgently fix. And stick around for the next video because we'll do exactly that.